tonight coming in at the back door and joining us this evening here for our Player of the Year. Please welcome your champions And it looks quite nice there, doesn't it? Because you know what? Kelly are back! As you know, this year uh, marks the 10th anniversary, of course, of winning the League Cup. And of course, any excuse to get and have a really good night, we don't really need an excuse, do we? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome some members of that cup winning team tonight. You have Cammy Bell, Cammy Hay, James Dayton, Lee Johnson, and the man that led us to win today, Mr. Your unsung heroes tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Richard Cairns and John Livingston. Both Richard and John have given long voluntary service to Kamarak FC. Uh, Richard, as you know, was the programme editor for over 20 years, and John is our club historian, our very own Stato, indeed. <laughs> We need to say no more. Ladies and gentlemen, Ollie Shaw! Really, actually, when you think about the Young Player of the Year this year, there have been so many great candidates over the years. Um, however, I was off the phone a couple of minutes ago to this guy's parent club and said he was utter <laughs> We need him to stay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Zach Should also say as well that Kenny Shields is the man that gave Rory his first full start in a Kelly jersey. Years it's also the year of the 10th anniversary of 2012. The cup winning team, members of the cup winning team are here tonight. And uh, we're going to go down and, well, we're going to welcome up on stage first of all, and then we'll go down and have a word. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome onto the stage. He says what he wants. Kenny Shields! <laughs> I can uh, remember the eight, eight, we stayed in this hotel the night before the final. And um, it was there I met a former player on that, on that evening. And he said to me, can I, you don't beat the old firm in a final at Hampden. And he had his stats and all there. And he says that they haven't been beaten in so many years uh, by a team not from the, the big two. Yeah. So that, that gave the lads some motivation when I told them. And, um, but when we were walking down those stairs, uh, getting ready to go and play the match, I don't know what the players felt like, but I was as, as nervous maybe as I've ever been. Yeah. Because the, the supporters were gathered around the hotel. Um, and, and, and I don't know if that's traditional in Scotland, because I, I haven't been in another final in Scotland. But uh, it, was quite, it, it was quite emotional because everybody was wanting to uh, get on the bus and everybody was uh, giving us the best wishes. And it, you know, the passion that that gave us was very, very good. And uh, I remember thinking, if only, and I really hope we can, walk back up those stairs after the game and feel as if we've achieved something. And it was a great, a great day out. No, listen, um, the day in the build-up for it, again, I was speaking about a couple of lads out here tonight. 
Um, the night before, it was real. It was great to be with each other in a hotel. That was that wasn't normal to us. We were normally just at home, turn up for the game, pre-match meal maybe. Um, so we had that night before. It was it was a huge game for us. Kenny relaxed us. He actually um, offered us a beer if we wanted one the night before. Listen, nobody took it up, but again, I think that was good psychology from Kenny because he just made us feel relaxed and wanted us to, again, he knew it was a huge occasion. Guys like myself had never been in this situation before, so yeah, it was a, it was a big build up. I remember coming down the stairs, as Kenny said, all the fans were there getting on the buses, going to Hamden that day, and it was, it was a huge occasion. And yeah, the, the first moment of the game, as you spoke about Mohammed. Um, Mohamedou Suzoku passed the ball straight to Gary Hooper and was one on one. So, but that, listen, that, that set me up for the day. It set the tone for the game. I think it tuned everyone in as well. It allowed me to breathe confidence, obviously, for myself, but even for the team. I think from that moment we started believing. How do you, how do you value your time? Obviously, we're hearing recollections from the game. We'll come to that with the both of you in a second, but. How do you kind of value your time here at Kilmarnock? It's mainly, for me, it's always about the people. And you came in, you felt the supporters were fully behind uh, what Kenny and the club were doing. Um, when we played, you know, there was a passion in the way we played and the way we trained. And we also went out a bit as well. Yeah. Um, and we, <laughs> we, <laughs> we know you out Parkers <laughs> A little wee from uh, foul over there. But no, we did. And that was all part of it because it's part of the bonding. Uh, and you know yourselves, like a night like tonight is just a fantastic night and, and that can build rapport. You know, the bonding is really important. And, uh, I was, um, I think I was 22 at the time, so I was still quite young. I'd just come off the back of a, a big injury, I'd done my ACL, so, um, you know, I, I, I was still up for the game, you know, again, preparing ready just in case I had to come on. And I actually shared a room with, with John up and um, <laughs> no one knows this, but we was in the room before and he's going, Bench, like, relax. Like, I've got to get up. I've got a feeling that old uh, Daddy Bougie's going to pull out. <laughs> within, I thought it was like five minutes. Again, you go back to the day and you just think everything runs so quick. And, and then Hookie actually said, no, he actually lasted about 25 minutes. And then, and then obviously you come on and ended up setting up the goal. So it was brilliant. No, I, I think the boys have covered it well, to be fair. Um, probably, you know, more personal one was actually you know, a conversation both James and I had with, with Kenny um, you know, a week before. Mm -hmm. I think it's Inverness away, I think it was, it wasn't it? And I remember Kenny um, bringing us into the office and just kindly dropping us for the Inverness game. Uh, but with the, He's got a habit of dropping the boys at the table, yeah. But his, his words were that he says next week's a cup final. Um, and this is a huge cup final for you too. Um, I know how much it means to both of you. Um, and I don't want to get you injured, essentially. Um, and that was the way he kind of sold it. So he just kind of says, one is he's getting the weekend off, and one is he's coming up to sit on the bench. So I get my feet up in the house and <laughs> watched a wee box set. Um, so while I went up and sat on the bench, I think he ended up getting on as well, didn't he? Going into the Celtic game, obviously, there's you're playing one of the big two, uh, and there probably wasn't that pressure that there might have been uh, if it was uh, against another team, certainly mm -hmm. maybe for, for the Hibs game that spoke, uh, sorry, Hookie spoke about earlier. Uh, so yeah, and I think obviously, kind of spoke about Kenny on a number of occasions tonight as well, and I remember the night before, he kind of put up the ball that's believed to achieve, and sometimes they can just be words, mm -hmm. and it's, it's hard to actually put them into action, but I think, speaking like Cammy there, and I think Sissoko, and obviously Cammy pulled off, save after save and, and that belief does start to grow uh, and that kind of sticks with you as well and like we spoke about we did have a number of chances ourselves and we were well within that that final and obviously then I think I was the pass before the pass before the pass for that goal as well so I'm, I'm claiming you some, you who claims I'm actually taking an assist for I definitely didn't have many of them my assist, assist. I'm definitely taking it not just on the ball but what you do off the ball um, but this year, just talk us through some of the kind of difficulties maybe that supporters don't know about, maybe the frustration. You know, it's easy, I think, for all of us to get frustrated if a result doesn't go our way, especially in the, in the championships. So talk us through 
those experiences and how you managed to overcome some of those hurdles? Uh, it's been a, it's definitely been an up and down year. Um, you know, I find it funny anyone that comes up to me recently says, "I used to give you pillars." <laughs> and it's anyone in the room guilty of that? Aye. Listen, I, it, it doesn't affect me. I completely understand if I'd been, you know, if I'd been watching myself the last ten years, there's been times that I've not been good enough. But this year, I think this year emphasises that as well. There was at the start of the season, especially, I didn't think I was, you know, was that impressive. But I think uh, with the new manager coming in. <laughs> I back to back to the first question. It really has been a, it's been a, it's been surreal. I think for me it means it meant a lot after after last season going down and you know at times this year it was a, it was a it was a proud thing. It's different to other teams. I think losing to our growth, losing the league to our growth would have been it would have been a bit of pill to swallow. And especially for me, I'll you know I might never have a chance to win a you know, definitely not to win a league title again, but just a medal in general. Every year that goes past, it's been 11 years, and you, you start to think it's not going to be. I can't go through my whole career without winning anything. But um, I'm just so pleased that we're able to get it get it done, and especially to win it in the manner we did.